One of the most terrible things that has gripped lots of churches and, and lots of ministers in our time is the pragmatic advice, you're the minister, you're the leader. You need a vision, and you need to take that vision and drive it, no matter what the opposition is. Just pragmatically, it seems to me unlikely that most ministers are that smart. Sorry. I'm part of the club, but nonetheless, um, it just seems to me at almost every point that notion is unchristian. Um, God has called us to a common responsibility in the government of the church. And you notice that the, um, the confession says some very important things about what the church ought to be doing in its government. Article 30 of the Belgian Confession says, the church must be, must be governed by that spiritual polity which our Lord has taught us in his word, then talks about ministers, elders, and deacons who form a council that true religion may be preserved. I'll talk more about that later, but I, I've always thought that's a fascinating phrase in our confession. The council is responsible and necessary that true religion may be preserved. True religion doesn't get preserved automatically. And when we look at what's going on in American religion, we can say an awful lot of true religion is not being preserved in an awful lot of churches. But God has set things up so that there will be ministers and elders and deacons who have the task and responsibility of preserving uh, true religion. And more specifically, Article 30 goes on to say, that true doctrine may everywhere be propagated. And I believe... I may not be right about this, but I tend to think I am. Um, I think that is the responsibility per peculiarly given to ministers. That true doctrine be propagated. It's interesting, in Calvin's Geneva, he had three distinct organizations. There was the Venerable Company of Pastors, which was just for ministers. There was the Consistory, which was for ministers and elders. And there was the Diaconal Meeting for deacons. And I think our confession echoes this a little bit here. Now, elders and deacons need to be concerned about true doctrine too, but there's a particular responsibility of ministers to maintain true doctrine. That's why we send ministers to seminary. So they can be doctrinally acute and maintain true doctrine. And then secondly, that transgressors be punished and restrained by spiritual means. I think that's distinctively the work of the elders. Again, the ministers are involved in that, but that's peculiarly the responsibility of the eldership, and that was true of the consistory in Geneva. The consistory was primarily elders with some ministers involved in evaluating, supervising, the moral life of the congregation. And then thirdly, that the poor and distressed may be relieved and comforted. That's peculiarly the work of the deacons, isn't it? And I think that's, that's particularly important, that the poor and distressed may be relieved and comforted. The work of the diaconate is not simply a monetary function, but it is a spiritual function. They are to give checks and comfort. Um, they are to be there uh, to help people and to relieve the distress, both spiritual and physical. So here, here are the great responsibilities laid out before the council with some particular application, it seems to me, uh, to uh, particular offices. And this, our confession says, by divine revelation. This is not up for debate. This is not up for grabs. This is the way God has set things up. And even though we live in a culture that in its individualism and pragmatism doesn't much want to hear that God has set up institutions with responsibility, that God has brought us together into a family and into a community where there's mutuality and responsibility, I think the Reformed churches are right. 
And I believe that in a culture like ours, where individualism has become so rampant, and where neighborhoods have been destroyed, and families have been destroyed, and all of what sociologists call used to be the mediating structures of society have largely been destroyed, there are going to be more and more hurting people that are going to be looking for churches like ours. Only by God's grace, of course. 